Hey, hey vlog! vlog. Did you know it? <laughs> Welcome back for another video. I have my special guest with me. Hi y'all, I'm Maggie. So today we're filming a little sorority Q&A slash assumptions type video. Um, we both joined our organizations in fall 2018. So we're both seniors, it's our last year. Um, I'm in 80 Pi. I'm in Chi Omega. And first we're gonna tell you a little bit about like the leadership positions that we have right now slash have had to just give you a little bit of perspective on like some of our answers. Yeah. So I can start off. So my freshman year after joining, I was elected onto Chi Omega's Cardinal Cabinet as Community Service and Philanthropy Director. So I held that for a whole calendar year. And then I was elected onto our Executive Board as our new member educator. And then currently I serve a second term on our Executive Board as the Director of Programming. So I oversee the Cardinal Cabinet now in programming aspects of Chi Omega, as well as I serve on the Panhellenic um, Executive Board as Vice President of Philanthropy. Yeah, and for anyone that doesn't know, the Panhellenic Executive Board, I know I said it in the last video, oversees like all of the sorties. Um, so I, my freshman year, served as our bid day chair and our merchandise chair. Um, so I did like the t-shirts and then I did bid day. Um, and so that was for the full calendar year. And then my sophomore year, I got into our executive board as the vice president of marketing. So I oversaw all of our recruitment and marketing. And then um, this year I serve as our chaplain. And then I also serve as our Panhellenic vice president of recruitment. And then for the next two months, I serve as our Panhellenic president. So we both have a lot of different perspectives and just like mm -hmm. knowledge and behind the scenes info on things. Yeah. So now we're gonna get onto the questions. <laughs> so our first question is, we're gonna start off super simple. <laughs> what is a sorority? So basically, I guess I can start with this. A sorority is essentially a group of like-minded women who come together and like we all have values. So each organization has different values. Ours are sisterhood, scholarship, service, and self. Um, so that's something that all like people going into 80 Pi typically like focus on and value as an individual. And each organization also has a philanthropy that they partner with nationally. Um, so ours is Ron McDonald House. Ours is Make-A-Wish. Um, and so we do like philanthropy week and service events and just have like sisterhood events. And it's just like really just a great like community and support system. Yeah, for me, like I came to school pretty far from living in Pennsylvania to coming down here. So like a sorority to me was like a home away from home. Mm -hmm. um, it was girls who had same like aspirations and had the same like values, like Natalie said, um, that I shared, but also girls who like could see my potential and like encouraged me to go for all these leadership positions, um, both in Greek life and outside of Greek life. And it's also just people who I know I can go to with like anything. Um, because as we're going to talk later on in the video, like we all share ritual and stuff. So it's like that deeper connection with those girls that I might not have with um, other girls on campus. Yeah, it's a support system like no other. Like yeah. it is one of the greatest communities. And like we always say to people, like you're not just joining your sorority, you're joining all the Panhellenic mm -hmm. sororities. Like, I mean, the two of us, we're best friends and we're obviously in different yeah, ones. Um, and that's just because like we're just such a whole community of sororities. So yeah, that's basically what a sorority is for anyone that doesn't know. Yeah. So the next question is, can you join after freshman year? Do you want to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you can definitely join after freshman year. Um, I know some campuses, it's like you can't join your fall, like freshman year, you have to join spring. Like some campuses have rules, but for our campus, you could join fall your freshman year. So we both did that option. Mm -hmm. um, but I know many girls in all the organizations on campus who have joined like their sophomore year, or even after their sophomore year. Um, but the only tricky part about that is like, in a sense, like sororities want to get the most out of your potential as they can, I guess. So like, obviously sometimes joining earlier on like it's kind of sometimes like a business so like they will through dues get more money from you but it's also like you'll be able to give more back to that organization because you'll be there for four years not just like two years or three years or something like that so it's kind of like a mutual like yes but you also have to know that like there are some yeah 
they're gonna typically want a freshman yeah. over like a junior or a senior, but that doesn't mean that like as a junior or senior, you're just like cut out mm -hmm. from it. Um, they just might prioritize a freshman because even like for us, we both have had three years of leadership positions. And if I had joined my junior year, I would have only had one. Mm -hmm. um, so they've just gotten a lot more out of us yeah. like as freshmen than like, but on our campus, Joining as a sophomore is so, so common. common. Like f freshman and sophomore is pretty much the same, like on our campus. Yeah. Um, so it's really doesn't affect that age and, group. <laughs> like we were Pi Chi's for recruitment, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but there are a few like girls who joined sophomore year who like have said how they kind of regret it. Um, and how they wish they got that extra year because not only is that just like an extra year of like leadership or anything, but that's also just like an extra year of meeting more girls and more sisters and being more connected to that organization um, than not. Okay, so the next question is, how do you know which sorority is the best fit for you? So we were kind of talking about it before and a lot of it is just a feeling you get during yeah. recruitment. Like you just know when you walk into those rooms or if you go to a school with like houses. Um, but a lot of times it's just like, it is that individuals that have those values that you have and you just feel comfortable talking to them. For me in 80 Pi's room, like, I opened up about things that like I hadn't talked to a lot of people about and it was girls that I had literally met 30 seconds before and I was all of a sudden like pouring my life story to them and so it's just that comfort level um and just like I could see where I could grow as an individual within the chapter and just like felt like I had a support system before I even like walked out of the room and so that was a huge reason for me with like going through recruitment how I kind of knew it just felt like home it just felt right and I just like fell into place yeah, I definitely, like, felt that sense of, like, you just kind of have that weird feeling. Um, but for me, it was also, like, I wanted to get something out of this experience. So it was also, like, the conversations that I was having with those, like, sisters in the different organizations and, like, how they were making their organization sound. Like, they all make it sound, like, best thing ever, which, like, mm -hmm. to them it is. And, like, recruiting on the other side, like... It, you do say that but for me it was like I wanted to get leadership out of it and I like I wanted to leave a legacy so like that played a role in which one I knew was best for me but definitely you just have that feeling of like you yeah. just kind of know and it's a huge just trust the process mm -hmm. if you go through recruitment everybody will say that a hundred times over yeah. but it really is just trust the process because things work out the way it's supposed to um so yeah i think that's pretty much how we both knew you just yeah. you get that feeling and you just run with it the next question is what is recruitment so being the recruitment girl of 80 pi panhellenic all that i know a lot about recruitment it is one of my favorite things since i went through as a freshman like i have always loved it i'm such a people person so getting to talk yeah. to people all day and amazing um, but essentially there's like two types of recruitment. There's formal recruitment and there's informal recruitment. So we participate, our campus does in fall formal recruitment. So that means in the fall, like Maggie said, we have our recruitment process and this year it was four days and then bid day. So essentially you have like sister, it's a little bit different at each school, but our school does sisterhood round, which is a lot quicker. You just kind of like briefly get to know the chapters, kind of that like first impression sort of thing. And just like little conversations with girls. And then you have philanthropy round, which is longer. You learn about like the different philanthropies, some service activities they do, just kind of deeper level conversations. And then the last day is preference round. And that's where you have like your deepest conversations. You really get to know the chapter and the girls and you get to see like a little part of their ritual and it's just super, super special. And then you have bid day, which is when you open your bid and you get to run home, super fun day. Um, and so informal recruitment is sometimes called like COB or continuous open bidding, just COR, it's called like all different things, but that's um, much more like informal things like getting coffee with girls or like sometimes they'll do sisterhood events things like that um and it's usually just if a chapter has like open spaces they might do that to fill it like in the spring or like right after recruitment it just kind of depends and some schools do like spring recruitment instead of fall um it just depends on the school but recruitment is when you meet the different chapters, you pick your chapters. It's a mutual selection process. So you rate the chapters, the chapters like rate the girls and it's just like 
It's just the mutual selection, little algorithm, some math that goes <laughs> into it. But it's a whole just trust the process. It's such a fun yeah. time of year. And like, it can be long days and it can be stressful, but it's so worth it in the end. Like, yeah. And I think my biggest advice is like going through recruitment is like, if you're not sure if like you, I guess, have felt that, like, how do you know which one's for you? Like, um, we were Pi, well, I was Pi Kai, you were. Yeah, I was Pi Kai, but yeah. it was because I was in charge. Um, so I basically disaffiliated this past fall so that I could help the PNM's potential new members like go through and find their organizations. And my biggest advice that I gave to my PNM's was that, like, could you see yourself possibly next year standing in that room recruiting for that organization? So it's like, you might like, oh, I really like their dresses or their outfits, but like, can you go deeper than that and be like, oh, I could actually relate to their values and like, I can say how these values have impacted me before even joining it. So just like, I always say, put yourself into their shoes. Yeah, and our campus in Panhellenic really across the country tries to focus on values-based recruitment, which is that like focusing on the conversations, like we don't really have a lot of decorations in our rooms. Yeah, the chapters are dressed up, but it's not as like, like same exact outfit as some other like bigger schools are. Um, and so it is focused on those conversations and the values of the chapters. So the next question is, what are the requirements to join? Do you want GPA. To... Yeah. <laughs> um, that is both an organization normal requirement, but also a Panhellenic requirement. So kind of like how we mentioned before, like you're joining a sorority who's then joining a community and that community is run by Panhellenic and they're all Panhellenic organizations. So most of the time, Panhellenic will have a set GPA um, for you to go through recruitment. Um, and that's normally just set off or is based off of the organization's um, GPA. So like our GPA might be different from your mm -hmm. GPA, but like... It's kind of whatever the baseline. Yeah. yeah. So, so each chapter has different ones, but GPA is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, most chapters, you have to be a full-time student because to be in a sorority, you have to be a college student. Um, and so it depends. Sometimes they'll have like exceptions with like certain situations. Yeah. Um, but typically you have to be a full-time student and then just like the financial like yeah. obligations, which, um, we'll go over a little bit, but yeah. there's not a ton of requirements other than that. The biggest thing is just like GPA requirement. You also, I feel like this isn't necessarily a requirement, but like you have to kind of want it. Like, yeah, we're going to talk a lot about a lot more about this later but like you have to want it or have some sort of interest in it um because like my freshman year like me and my whole suite went through and like some girls didn't necessarily want it as much as others and like you could tell based off of like their time in their organization okay so the next question is what happens after bid day I'm going to turn this one to you. <laughs> um, so as a previous new member educator, um, basically I in Chi Omega was in charge from bid day as soon as we got those new members um, until they are initiated sisters. So that is what it's different for each campus. But for our campus, it's a six to eight week process. Um, and in that process, you do so many different things. You're learning about the organization um, nationally. You're learning about the chapter. You're learning about other chapters on campus. Um, you're learning like the Greek alphabet like you're just learning a lot about Greek life but that's also a fun time where you get to do like big you get like a big sister you like get to go on like different dates with different sisters like you get to go to different events like if we do like a social or something like new members get to go so it's a really fun experience um, I loved my new member experience. Um, it's so fun. Being the babies of the chapter yeah. is so fun. Um, you have older sisters blowing up your phone mm -hmm. being like, oh my God, do you want to get coffee? Like you're going to run out of like coffee. Like yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> a lot of coffee and a lot of food dates, but it's just like a really fun experience. Um, but basically it's just to educate you and it's just like to kind of validate your um, reasoning for wanting to be in that chapter because technically um, until you're an initiated sister in any organization, you can resign from the process. Um, obviously, we don't want that to happen, um, but that is a possibility. So that's kind of just like six to eight weeks for you to, if you might have been on the fence, for you to like truly learn about it, meet more sisters who you might not have talked to during recruitment, but like who could be your best friend mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Yeah. You also meet your other new members, yeah. buddy pals. It's such a fun time. Like getting, like honestly, because ours are called alpha sessions. When you're a new member, you're called an alpha. 
for um, AD Pi, and those were always so much fun. Our alpha mom, Taylor, who's actually my G-Big, she, like, we would do, like, cahoots and Jeopardy and play games, yeah. and, like, it's just such a bonding time with the rest of the girls, and, like, usually you'll do, like, a pledge class sleepover, and it's just, it's so fun. Yeah. It's just such a it's fun a time. time. Yeah, and it's nice having, like, the new member educators to, like, guide you through that process. Yeah. Like, you're not just thrown out into the chapter. And um, I know, like, when I was a new member, like, I was very close with my new member educator, um, and then like becoming a new member, new member educator. Like, I was it during COVID, so I couldn't get like the full experience. Um, but like, I got close with a lot of my new members who like I'm still very close with to today. So it's just like really cool to get that bond of like kind of like a mentor um, mm -hmm. within the chapter as you're like learning about it and growing. Yeah. So, yeah. so the next question is, what do sororities do? So like we've kind of mentioned throughout it, we do so much. We all have our philanthropies that we do philanthropy week. We have service like beach cleanups. Um, like for 80 pie, we do like Ronald McDonald house visits. Um, we have sisterhood events. So like we have like pumpkin paintings. Our chapters did one together yeah. one time. We have a movie night coming up yeah. with our chapters. I know we have a sisterhood retreat, which is like Kyle Olympics. Yeah. Something. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. We do, we do sisterhood retreat right before like big little reveal. Um, and it's just like a time of just like hanging out. We do like the riff off, you know, from Pitch Perfect. Mm. We always do that. Um, we have socials, which is the times where we like dress up in like costumes or in like dresses. Formal um, yeah, formal. You can bring those a date. are not my favorite. I like or dressing great up. Great dates. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we do like Greek Week and Homecoming. Um, just all sorts of things. Like yeah, we do a lot as sororities, and so it definitely can be time consuming. But it's so fun. And there's only usually like one, maybe two required things a week. So we have yeah. chapter meetings, which is basically like That's our Sunday. weekly meetings on Sundays. Um, and those are mandatory, but they're not bad. And like, it's really fun, like all getting to be together as a chapter. And then mm -hmm. initiation is always mandatory. Um, usually chapter retreats are, but yeah. there's not a lot of mandatory things throughout the semester. It's like what you want to go to. Yeah. Um, and they're mandatory, like coming from an exact position, like they're mandatory for a reason. We're not yeah. just like, oh, you need to come yeah. to this for whatever reason. <laughs> like we want you to be there for initiation for these new girls, um, and different reasons. Like we want you to come to chapter so you know what's going on in the organization, you know, like what events we have coming up, what might be going on in other organizations. Yeah. So it's like, there's always a lot. Yeah. And we also have like Panhellenic events. So like mm -hmm. us being on the Panhellenic board, like we, this upcoming week, actually after our Panhellenic meeting, which is like every other week, um, the whole community can come together and like listen to the board and um, the chapters speak and things like that. But we have like a pumpkin painting event and we'll do like, we'll have like speakers and retreats and just all sorts of things. Yeah. So our chapters have things, but then we also have things for Panhellenic. So. And it's also really cool because like, Natalie and I like are obviously in other organizations, but like we go to each other's things as well. So like she'll come to like Kyo's make a wish things or like I was her date to social or like we just like it's really cool to not only have like your organization or like Panalytics, but like other organizations, both like fraternity and sorority events that you can go to. I was supposed to be her date for a social and then COVID came. We were supposed to be what was it like? Um, rhyme without reason. Rhyme without reason. So we are going to be Lightning McQueen and, and Aquamarine. Aquamarine. <laughs> I'm so sad still that that didn't happen, yeah. but it's fine. COVID happened. So yeah, but it's really fun being in a story. Mm -hmm. You have a lot to do and people to hang out with. Yeah. Like we're like people who need to stay busy. So like this is perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our next question yeah. kind of goes off the last yeah. one, but is it hard to balance sorority life and school? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It takes a lot of time management yeah. skills, teaches you a lot of time management skills, but it's, you honestly get out of it what you put yeah. into it. So you choose how to balance it. Obviously freshman year, like I didn't have as many other obligations, so I could go to a lot more things for 80 pie. Yeah. Now I do have to sometimes prioritize like, you know what? I have this huge project or I have this huge test or yeah. I have like a different club meeting, things like that. But being in a sorority has helped me like stay on track and like helped me with those time management skills and like the accountability factor. Like yeah. we're always in the library. We always okay. have people like in the library. And so like, even if I'm doing homework, I'm not alone. Yeah. Like I'm with people. 
That's kind of what I was going to talk about. Like, I was just asked, like, in an interview when I've put, like, scholarship over, like, social obligations or things. And, like, for me, it's, like, definitely, like, you want to go out with your friends. You want to hang out with sisters and do whatever it might be. Like, you might want to go to this fun sisterhood event that's going on, but, like, you have a big project. And, like, you'll be able to find a sister to do any single thing you want to do. Mm -hmm in it so like if you want to go to the library because you need to prioritize that homework you'll find a sister to go with if you want to go to that sisterhood retreat or event like you'll find a sister to go with if you want to go out and have fun like you'll find a sister so like that's what I also love about like being in it is that like yes it's hard to manage but it's worth managing it because you make so many connections out of it mm -hmm. and it's like worth it yeah and I wouldn't say it's like stressful it's mm -hmm. just figuring out the hours of your day and where yeah. to like allocate them and like I try to sit down at the beginning of the week and like plan out my week so then I know like okay this is the homework I need to get done today like do I have time to go to this event or do I have time for this and at the beginning of the semester like we get a calendar for the whole semester and like some yeah. events will pop up but you have plenty of time to like sit and kind of look at your schedule yeah and like another thing is that like some organizations like I know Kaya does and I think y'all do like have a point system yeah. too so it's like I got five points to go to our social event by sending in um an a plus on a quiz yeah so it's like you can definitely also get involved in other ways than just going to the events like at club k so much mm -hmm. fun Love and like fun. as sororities like we prioritize like academics mm -hmm. like that is most of us one of our values is like scholarship or something yeah. like that um because you do have to have the right gpa to get in and mm -hmm. to be in a sorority you have to be a college student to stay in college you have to get good grades so it kind of all just balances out but <laughs> okay um so the next question is how much are dues so it kind of depends on the yeah. school and on the chapter we don't have houses on our campus so it's a lot cheaper um still not cheap but it's cheaper <laughs> yeah. um and it is worth it and okay. you are paying for like all the events and all the like socials and things like that so you know where your money is going yeah um like for example going off that like i'm like since i'm in charge of like all programming like i oversee like our social director and so to go to all those mixers and social events like you need a bus a charter bus mm -hmm. well two of those cost two thousand dollars money doesn't grow on trees <laughs> so like your dues are going to things that like you get out of it like, yeah and it's like for your safety like some chapters like i know like my chapter like we got stitched letter shirts one time so it's mm -hmm. like you're not paying that extra fee for the shirt, but it's like you are in your dues. It's included. Um, and it's also like your first year, it's normally a little more expensive because you're paying for like initiation dues, like your badge or like your pin dues, um, new member fees. But like that's all like a one-time charge. And yeah. then after it will change to like a more steady basis. Um, I don't think I've had the same amount of dues every year mm -hmm. at and during COVID, it was cheaper. Yeah, we like COVID. It was cheaper. Yeah, and like the VPs yeah. of like finance or whatever each chapter calls it, they're really good about like getting it as cheap as possible, mm -hmm. but still like enough money that we can do all the fun yeah. things without having to worry about it. Yeah, and it's also like you don't have to pay it. Like, oh, here's all the money. Yeah, like I know I'm on a payment. I'm on a payment, plan. so plan. it's like I pay monthly, but it's mm -hmm. definitely like those like treasurers or VP of finance, like they also want to work with you as bad as it sounds to get your yeah. money so like they want you to be in the organization they want you to get the most out of it because if you're not that's less money that then is yeah just a lot of and money. there's scholarships and things like i mm -hmm. every year have gotten a scholarship through 80 pi like yeah. um our chapter scholarship and we have panhellenic ones you got that uh, one year um, yeah so there's definitely ways to be able to like afford it and it just depends on the school some yeah the next question is, is there a lot of commingling between fraternities and sororities and just like between the sororities? So yes, yeah. we actually are- At our school. Yeah, it depends on the school. I think us not having houses helps a lot mm -hmm. with it, but we're actually Panhellenic cousins. Um, people think that we make that up, but yeah. basically <laughs> her chapter came onto our campus 2017, yeah. right? And so when they came onto campus, they got bigs in other chapters kind of as like guidance on our campus. And my G big or like my grandma, she has a little in Kayo who's Maggie's big. So we're Panhellenic cousins. So there's definitely some commingling and we'll do like events together. Like she said, how we have the yeah. movie. Um, 
It's yeah. also, like, when it comes to, like, fraternities, like, yeah, like, mostly, like, sororities and fraternities pair up for different things, but that's also because, like, we're on a very similar schedule with a lot of stuff, so, like, fraternities have chapter just like we do, like, mm -hmm. they're participating in Greek Week just like we are, they participate in, like, Relay for Life and different things, so mm -hmm. it's, like, we definitely will, like, I know, like, Kyo and Pie's partner, sorry, has partnered with, like, Relay for Life together, yeah. but then, like, last year, Kyo partnered with another fraternity. Yeah, campus. and we did Sigma so. Kappa last year, which yeah. is a sortie, so it always just kind of depends, but we definitely partner for Homecoming Week, mm -hmm. um, Greek Week, and Relay yeah. for Life, and then we'll do, like, beach cleanups yeah. and things like that, and then sometimes we'll just do, like, potlucks and, like, mixers and just yeah. different things like that. Um, like, I know we're supposed to have, like, a pizza night with one of the fraternities soon, so it's just, like... Mm -hmm. It's really fun and we'll hang out in the library like yeah. and being on like the panhellenic executive board definitely furthers that like oh, friendship you. and like relationship and even with like the fraternities like we're friends with the ifc or like fraternity <laughs> board yeah. um and being like pie kai's like you meet a yeah. lot of people but our campus is very much a community, community. it's greek life and a greek community yeah. Not saying that that will be like that at other schools. Yeah, can't promise that. <laughs> That's at Coast Carolina. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Almost our last question. What are some benefits of sororities? Do you want to start? There's so many. There's so There's many. There's a lot. Um, <laughs> I think the biggest benefit that I personally got out of it is like personal growth. Like mm -hmm. I was always involved. Like I always have different like groups of friends. Like I'm just a very much people person. Um, but I have grown so much from high school and just like even every year I'm getting a new leadership position or just like meeting new people like I'm yeah. just constantly growing and I think part of that is also like sister older sisters in the chapter like saw something in me and like pushed me to that and so like I think that's my biggest yeah benefit I would say thing. that is one of my biggest like I was kind of even though I'm a huge people person I played soccer like competitively growing up and so I was involved in soccer that was what I that was my life and so I wasn't in a lot of clubs and things in high school I didn't really have leadership positions um and one of the reasons I wanted to come to Coastal was I did want to start to branch out but I never would have thought that I'd be the Panhellenic president. If you told me when I walked onto Coastal's campus four years ago, this is where, or three years ago, whatever it was, that this is where I'd be sitting, I would have said you're lying. But because I've had such a strong support system and people telling me like to do things and like kind of like slowly branching out throughout mm -hmm. the years and like just having girls push me in like a healthy way, like here I am. And like, yeah. I felt fully confident stepping into this position and like it, I like, barely recognized the person I was when I came yeah. to Coastal. Like, I just have grown so much and you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot Good about time. your values and things like that. Okay. I think another huge thing for me is like the accountability of having that support system. It's like, you just always have girls like making sure that like you're doing things mm -hmm. and like you're good and just like pushing you to do better. Yeah, I really also like the networking aspect. Um, I like, I don't know, it's just people person love networking yeah. and like growing my connections um and both my parents have a lot of connections but I was told like as a sophomore like from one of our alumni that like she was going in for a job interview and um she was getting interviewed obviously and like the interviewer were, yeah. I think so yeah um <laughs> literally like just saw that like Kai Omega was like the sorority that she was a part of and like she got the job because, like, obviously of her qualifications, not just because of that, but, like, it was because his daughter was a Chi Omega and he knows, like, what Chi Omega women, like, stand for and what they, like, strive for. So it's, like, even though, like, they personally, his daughter and her might not have known each other, like, it's still, like, just that networking aspect of, like, people know, like, oh, you're a sorority woman, like, you can do this or, like, you're a certain organization, like, this means this yeah so I like the networking yeah aspect. it's definitely huge with like networking and just like resume building mm -hmm. um like I've gained interview skills that like I didn't have before I had never been I I'd come on some interviews like for scholarships and things but like every single year we had to interview for our positions we both had interviews recently for like a Greek life like honor society type thing like I've just like learned how to like yeah. kind of prepare for a job and like you get a lot of those like soft skills like leadership and things like that and just like how to work with a wide group of people and like we both have been to conferences for our sororities 
um, where like we had like an officer academy where I learned a lot about like not just like my specific position, but how to lead a group of women and how to be like on an executive board, but still be like a regular chapter member with yeah. them. And going off that, like what I've learned in Chi Omega and like through Greek life has helped me in like non Greek life mm -hmm. interviews. So like I just got a job at like when a, an apartment complex and by our school and like part of why like I think like I was a good candidate was because like when she was asking me questions I had experience of like having to have those difficult conversations with like your friends because like you make friends with your coworkers, that's like a natural thing but like being able to sit someone down and say like listen this went wrong can we figure out a way to like solve it like I think I grew up a lot but like in the way of like I don't know like position yeah and, like, like it helps mature you if that makes I don't think that's the right word but hopefully you get what we're saying with that there's so many benefits I could talk yeah. all day about it anybody who ever and asked me on friends <laughs> <laughs> I like how neither of us said that <laughs> um, okay last question what is your favorite memory so we were talking about it before the video we have like same too many ones. and the same ones so both of us our first one was bid days, days. All they the are so fun, and this year was so cool. I bawled like, my eyes out. Yeah, we cried. Like, we bawled. cried. So basically, because we were Pi Kai's, we were disaffiliated, and that means that, like we didn't get to talk to our chapter at all. And then at the end, we got to run home to them after all the new members. And so it was really cool this year because our freshman year, we ran home across a bridge on our campus to Prince Lawn, which is like our main lawn. And we haven't had bid day there since our freshman year. And this year we had bid day there. Yes. And so we got to run home again with all of our oh, pie pies. So, cool. so that was super, super fun. I just yeah. love bid day. It's just so exciting. And it's like just a yay after exhausting recruitment. Yeah. But I don't know. That's always one of my favorites. Oh my gosh. Oh well, yeah, like that <laughs> one. Um, but I think another like favorite memory of mine is like Big Little. Um, I loved being a little, I loved getting littles, I loved getting G littles, and they share like- I don't like, like being a great grandma. <laughs> um, it's old and it's weird, but like, mm -hmm. I always like expanding the family. Um, it's just like fun. It's like, like midday, it's exciting. Yeah, like they run home, like you get to trick them. Yeah. Um, my little, when she was getting little, like wrote her full name on the card. So I was like, wow, you didn't really trick her. <laughs> but normally you get to And trick you get to like them. decorate their rooms and stuff. So yeah. most chapters decorate rooms during big little 80 pie. We do it during initiation week, but it's still yeah. super fun. Like once you have your little, mm -hmm. I it was so fun tricking them. And then it's like, yeah. you drop that poster and it's like, aha. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also loved Mock Rock our freshman year. We were talking about that. It was on my birthday. Yeah, it was on her birthday. April 4th. Um, so Mock Rock on our campus is basically the big dance competition. I think pretty much every campus has some version of it. Some call it like Greek Sing or There's, like yeah, so many names. Definitely. But basically like you, you pair up with a fraternity for Greek week. And it's like our biggest, it's one of the big events during the week. And you like practice for months, like multiple hours a day for months. Yeah. And you put on this huge, like, dance performance. It's, like, 10 minutes long. It is so fun. Yeah. But that was definitely a highlight. We also won my freshman year. So that was really fun. Maggie was sad because it was her birthday and they didn't win. Yeah. But that was so fun. Like, all of our hard work, like, paying off. Um, and, like, I'm not a dancer. I played soccer. I've never danced on a stage. I've never been on a stage. I was so nervous, but that music started it and it was like, you just like lock in and it was so fun. Um, yeah. One of my favorite memories, um, I can't believe I forgot about this. I talked about this during recruitment, like last year, all the time. Um, so when we were in COVID, I almost said when we were in COVID, when we were in quarantine, um, Kayo, our chapter, we did like sisterhood hangouts, like virtually. Um, and so like any sister could put on a different virtual event. And so like, that's when TikTok dances were. I remember. Big. I remember this. Um, so I, my brilliant idea was like, oh my God, I'm going to host like a learning TikTok dances <laughs> with Maggie. Um, a, like some sisters joined, obviously. And it was so funny just being in like completely different places in like the States and like having fun and like laughing and like learning these TikToks, like making fools of ourselves, but like not caring. My dad came in at a point and was like, what was going on? <laughs> like he thought like, I don't know, but it was so fun. Um, and I think that's like just another favorite memory is that like no matter where you are, you can still create those memories. Yeah. 
I think honestly, like whenever people have asked me my like why 80 pie or things like that, mine is always those like little moments. Like yeah. you have the big moments, but it's like all those little talks and conversations and hangouts mm -hmm. and things like that just make it all worth yeah. it. And like being a senior, like this year we've been reflecting a lot and you just look back on all of it and it's just like it's just crazy to just like think about all the memories. Like I could just sit here and talk about it all day. But then I'll probably start crying because yeah. We graduate soon and that's really sad. All right, y'all. Um, so that's the end of the video. It ended up being a lot <laughs> longer than we expected, um, but we're both talkers. So we probably should have known that's how it would go, yeah. but it's fine. <laughs> Hopefully you learn more about like sororities, things like that. Um, we're gonna make another video of the assumptions because like I said, we're talkers. Yeah. So we have like a part two kind of, um, where we'll do that. And that will be later in the week. So I hope you enjoyed. If you've made it this far, like this video, comment down below, hit subscribe, the hit the, the D. Bell. We don't know which side it's on, but we're hoping that side. Um, is there anything specific you want them to comment? Yeah, if you've made it this far, comment a TikTok dance that you want me and Natalie to learn, and we will learn it and post the video. <laughs> My TikTok is linked down below in oh, the description then follow box. It down there. So follow it, and you can find hers through it. So that's it for now. Bye. Bye vlog! <laughs> <It's not> <laughs>